Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, I will be talking about ulcer, otherwise known as peptic ulcer disease. So many people in our society today have ulcer, or may have had ulcer at some point in time or the other. Others, on the other hand, just keep on having recurrent ulcer attacks. Why is this so? You know, growing up, you may have heard someone say to you or say to someone else, make sure you eat. Don't skip a meal so that you don't develop ulcer. How true is this? Now, recently I was going through social media. I saw a post and the caption reads, I'd like to share it with you. It says, Even Even mommy mommy water, water, no get, no get flat tummy. tummy. You, you go the chop dinner, dinner by 3 p.m. By 3 p.m. When, when you, you don't, don't get ulcer, your, your eyes go clear. Now, what are the causes of ulcer? Is it really true that hunger causes ulcer? How do I get tested? How do I even know if I have ulcer? What should I do if I have ulcer? These and more I will be talking about shortly. Stay tuned, I will be right back. Welcome back. Peptic ulcer disease is a condition in which painful sores develop in the lining of the stomach or duodenum. It occurs when the protective layer of the stomach is infiltrated and becomes vulnerable to gastric acid and digestive enzymes. There are several potential causes of peptic ulcer disease and hunger is not one of them. The two most common causes are number one, bacteria and number two, prolonged use of NSAIDs. Don't worry, I'll explain that shortly. The Helicobacter pylori is the bacteria that causes stomach ulcer. This bacteria spreads from person to person through food and water. Um, where is Auntie Caro again? Please come, come, come closer, come closer. So you see, it is not because you skipped a meal or two that you developed peptic ulcer disease. It is probably because you've been eating everything that comes your way and you've come in contact with this bacteria and have ingested it into your stomach and it's now living in your stomach causing ulcerations in your stomach wall. And that is why you have ulcer, not because you skipped a meal, not because you were fasting, no. So I want you to understand that very, very quickly. When this H. pylori gets into the stomach, it penetrates the wall and lives in the wall of the stomach. Over time, it begins to produce an enzyme that neutralizes stomach acid. Now, to compensate for these, the stomach produces more acid, more gastric acid. By virtue of the production of more gastric acid, it begins to infiltrate and affect and cause irritation and inflammation to the stomach wall. So I want you to understand this. Hunger or skipping a meal does not literally cause ulcer, but can make the condition worse and even difficult to treat. So if you've already had ulcer, hunger can make it worse or difficult to treat. But on a literal terms, hunger does not cause ulcer. It is the bacteria that cause ulcer. The most common is the bacteria. Number two, the prolonged use of NSAIDs. What are NSAIDs? NSAIDs simply means um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Drugs like diclofenac, naproxene, aspirin, and the likes of them. The continuous use of these NSAIDs weakens and hinder the production of a particular chemical that helps to protect the stomach wall. And over time, the gastric acid, the digestive enzyme, begins to affect the wall because 
These NSAIDs will now make the stomach vulnerable and susceptible to the infiltration of the stomach passage. Now, symptoms usually present as pain in your upper abdomen from your belly button all the way to your breast bone or the epigastric region. Okay, but mind you, not all epigastric pain is caused by ulcer. It might just be that there is a gallstone in your gallbladder. I tell you a story. Some time ago, a woman came and met me. She has been treating ulcer, treating ulcer, taking medication, and she was not getting better at all. She was self-medicating. Please do not practice self-medication. Always consult your doctor whenever you are having symptoms. So she came, she was complaining, I've been having pain here and I don't know what to do. I've been taking medication, all to no avail. What should I do? A simple abdominal ultrasound gave us the answer. What she had was a gallbladder stone, not ulcer. And her problem was solved because she knew what it was and so please don't go self-medicating and buying drugs over the counter make sure you consult your doctor okay now other symptoms are like belching uh, uh, vomiting bloating uh, you feel very you just discover that you are getting full quickly while eating or after eating you feel uncomfortably full your stomach is just like Oh my God, I've eaten so much. This might just be because you're having ulcer. The symptoms of gastric ulcer usually increases while eating a meal. On the other hand, duodenal ulcer decreases, the symptoms decreases while eating a meal. This may be the reason why gastric ulcer is associated with weight loss, while duodenal ulcer is associated with weight gain. However, please, if you notice any of the symptoms, consult your doctor so that you can get tested and get treated. Talking about getting tested, your doctor uh, might suggest that you take a test, a blood test, a breath test, a stool test, or an upper endoscopy test to find out the severity of the ulcer and what might be causing the ulcer so that proper treatment plan uh, will be administered. Okay, the treatment either focus on lowering the stomach acid level or eliminating the bacteria from your system. Also, your doctor might recommend that you stay off uh, uh, from NSAIDs if you use them frequently. Oh, someone might be saying now, all right, so what should I do? All right, this is what you should do. Start by washing your hands regularly so you don't catch the bacteria or spread the bacteria. Make sure you cook your food and your meat properly before eating. Clean your hands before eating and after using the toilet. Drink clean water, okay? On the other hand, if you already have ulcer, please, Avoid spicy fried foods. Avoid unnecessary hunger strikes. Avoid the prolonged use of NSAIDs. This is very important. This is very important. Avoid carbonated drinks. Auntie Caro, are you hearing me? Avoid carbonated drinks, especially on an empty stomach. Okay? And for those of you who smoke, avoid smoking and drinking of alcohol. All these can worsen the condition and make it even more difficult to treat. So please take note. That is why so many people have recurrent ulcer attack because whilst they are taking the medication, they don't adhere to what they ought to do and what they ought not to do. So while you're taking the medication, you ought to do things and avoid things that will trigger the ulceration. So you don't go from taking an antacid and then tomorrow you're having it come back again and all of that. Peptic ulcer disease is treatable. You can overcome it. You can forget that you ever have experienced peptic ulcer disease before.
Only do what your doctor asked you to do. Take your medications right. Do not take things that will trigger uh, or irritate the stomach wall and keep to the regular regimen of your medication. By so doing, also will be a thing of the past. Thanks for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it, hit the like button. YouTube rewards and recommends videos that have more likes. So by hitting the like button, you're making it possible for others to see this video and benefit from it. So go ahead right now, hit the like button, subscribe if you've not yet subscribed. Please don't forget to drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about this video. Ask your questions, whatsoever you want to ask, go ahead and ask. I will respond to your questions as soon as I see them. Until I come your way again, don't forget, good health is priceless. And always remember to be intentional about your health status. See you some other time in my next video. Bye for now.